Hi everyone, John here from All Miniatures Great and Small. Today I'm going to be talking about Red Dawn, a World War III supplement for Team Yankee. Um, and it is a pretty exciting book. So I know people have been asking for Red Dawn since probably the beginning of uh, when Team Yankee came out. Um, if you don't know what Red Dawn is, it refers to the um, invasion of America. Uh, it's also, you know, a reference to the 1980s uh, movie Red Dawn, where the Soviets invade America and plucky American teenagers have to uh, repel the invasion. So um, it, it's high on pulp and silliness, and I think some of that comes across in the book. So let's go ahead and um, talk about Red Dawn. Also, just to let you know, this video, we're just going to be uh, covering and talking about some of the basics of the books. There's going to be follow-up videos where we go into more detail about maybe particular lists or the hobby side of it. But for today's video, this video, we're just uh, uh, giving you kind of an overview of the book without spoiling, trying to spoil everything. And uh, I'd also like to say, if you guys do like our Team Yankee uh, coverage, please do let us know down in the comments below. What do you guys think of this book? Um, what would you like us to? Uh, so, what would you like to see us cover next? Um, that kind of thing. Also, consider uh, joining. Uh, YouTube membership is down below. If you like our Flames of War content, you can check out our Flames of War specific Patreon. All right. So on to Red Dawn. Uh, this book has uh, 84 pages and it's jam packed full of stuff. And uh, there's a lot of fun interesting stuff in here um there's some stuff that um you know i feel is missing personally but uh let's go into that uh, all of the books start with uh, uh basically a history uh while i'm not going to read you the history we've basically got uh, the invasion of the united states here as well as canada i guess we we shouldn't exclude our canadian brothers to the north we have basically the uh, cubans attacking as well as the Russians. Two fronts, the, the Cubans primarily coming up through Texas and the Russians coming through British Columbia and down into the uh, United States from Canada. So it's very, very um, interesting time fitting into the rest of the narrative with, with uh, Team Yankee. How realistic that is? Well, I don't think it's very realistic, but Team Yankee World War III is a hypothetical game with lots of hypotheticals. Um, and basically, if you're interested in Red Dawn and you know it's based on the campy movie, um, you can't expect too much realism. So I'm not going to ding uh, Battlefront for the lack of realism um, in perhaps the scenario. And what do you guys mean for realism? Um, you know, you have a scenario where they're coming through British Columbia landing and coming down through Montana or from Texas moving all the way to New Mexico. Um, I can't imagine uh, a logistical uh, train that could cover that distance uh, in the United States. That's a huge train to support armor or even aircraft, but that's neither here nor there. Um, just know that it's, uh, you know, the invasion is on and only plucky American teenagers will be able to stop it. Okay. So what do you get in the box? Or in the book? Sorry, in the book. Um, you get a lot of cool um, Soviet stuff. You get um, the 7th Guards Airborne Division. And really, this Red Dawn book could be considered the Airborne Assault book. If, if you want to look at it that way. Because a lot of this, a lot of this is airborne assault friendly um, so you do get something like the uh, 7th guards division which has an air assault battalion Afghanistan veterans uh, the t-64 BV which is a new unit for us t-72 B as well as a bunch of Soviet support we get the Cubans which get a t-62 battalion a t-55 BMP ones BTR 60 and uh, then we have American um, militia groups as really the only new 
uh, NATO force in here, if you will. Um, and that's where I think the, the book is a little bit disappointing. Um, the Continental Forces, it does talk about the U.S. Continental Forces, and we'll get to that in a little bit. But there is, um, yeah, no, no new lists for the United States uh, military or the National Guard, which I think is a missed opportunity, but yeah, maybe that's coming in a, a, another book since this book, uh, The History Anyway, leaves us with a little bit of a cliffhanger. So the uh, Soviet stuff that we get in here, a lot of it's going to be um, stuff that we, we already have access to if you're a Soviet player. T-72 tank battalions, T-55s, T-62s. We have the T-64, which has a new upgraded uh, kit. And I think so. I think that's the one that would be fun to talk about right now. Let's we're going to the right page. And that introduces the T-64BV, which is uh, basically a ERA-equipped T-64 uh, with uh, a little bit better armor. Uh, and we'll, we'll probably do a unit overview separate of this, but we've got front armor 18 basically with that 125 millimeter gun that the Soviets have on everything as well as the ability to spit out the uh, Songster uh, anti-tank missile, uh, you could take that upgrade as well. But, um, you know, each one of these tanks runs approximately about five points um, in the red banner list, and, uh, you know, that varies depending on the numbers you take in a particular company, but that just gives you a ballpark of, of what you're paying. So, not bad. I mean, not a bad uh, tank at all. And I do think those Soviet tanks look very cool with the ERA armor blocks on them. The T-72B in the last release looks um, so cool, and, and this you know follows that same vein. Uh, it's very, very, very cool. But I definitely have to say the star of the show for the Soviet side is the BMD Air Assault Battalion. Um, this is what the a starter box for um, this release is based on and it includes you know a new model of the BMD-1 which is their tiny little um, you know it's like a, a shrunken BMP if you will it's a air assault version that can be airdropped or transported by by aircraft um, yeah APC that uh, runs with the infantry but um, you get uh, quite a, you know, quite a nice selection of these new vehicles. The Air Assault Battalion itself, you've got an HQ, um, a couple of mandatory Air Assault units um, that come in the BMD-1 and BMD-2 flavor, which is, you know, almost like the BMP ones and two flavors. Um, and then you can back them up in the core formation with. AA, anti-tank, recon, um, self-propelled um, like art uh, mortars and uh, assault guns. So the air assault battalion itself has uh, all the d these different tools in its bag, which is kind of what you'd expect in an air assault battalion since it's going to be running on its own. Um, the BMP, oh, sorry, not BMP, BMD one and twos are interesting. Uh, little tanks I mean they're not anything super amazing they do a lot of the same things that uh, a BMP does uh, but they do take less room on the battlefield the BMD2 um, you know none of these have great armor that has a front armor of two side armor of one doesn't even really stop a, a 50 cal um, but I mean it gives them some protection uh, but the BMB-2 uh, has the Spandrel missile, which is, you know, really nice. I mean, it's AT-21. That's going to threaten almost any NATO tank, except maybe the the ultimate top-of-the-line models. So you can't really ignore these little guys. And, you know, you can get a lot of them um, for for the points, um, since they're, they're transports. Basically, almost every team gets uh, gets its own transport so for example the the full-size air assault company is 
10 AK-47 teams, 9 RPG-7 teams, and 10 BMP, in this case 2, since that's what we're talking about, uh, transports. So that's quite a lot of, of uh, stuff you can get on the table. Now, it is pricey as far as Soviets go. It is like um, 24 points for that, but that's a lot of stuff you can put on the table, and I think it's kind of kind of cool. Well, as far as what you can use to support your, um, you know, air assault battalion, you've got um, some pretty standard stuff. Um, you know, the Soviet forces do have not quite as much as in other books like the main Soviet book, uh, but you do have some of the standard um, you know, you can take the carnations, the rocket launcher trucks, the um, BMP-3 recon platoon. You can take, um, you know, frogfoot support, uh, things like that, as well as allied formation. So there's quite a bit you can um, use to flesh out your force, or you could play primarily as a themed um, drop army, which I think would be pretty cool. The Cubans um, bring an interesting um, aspect to the game. They are uh, kind of an older force. They're again, their their top of the line stuff is T62s and T55s, and they do have uh, BMP and BTR60s, which is um, you know again older era equipment. But that said, it's also going to be a lot cheaper. So. As, as funny as it is, the Russians aren't your swarm army in this book. It's the, the Cubans where you can fit a lot of, you know, a lot of tanks in for the points, particularly if you're playing a hundred point, um, you know, a hundred point battle, 10 T-55s, as you guys are aware, run, you know, anywhere from, you know, like 13, 14 points, something like that, which is, uh, you know, it means you can get a lot of stuff in there. Their um, BMP-1 and BTR-60, again, nothing um, really amazing about them except for their cost. You can just get a lot of these guys, um, I mean, which is uh, cool if that's what you're going for. You can fit a lot of infantry in that. So the Cubans are your, your, your bulk troops. Now, with that said, and you know, like I said, we're not going to spend too much time on the, the Cubans. Um, this book has a lot of airborne operation potential in it, um, and it does include some um, ways that you can do U.S. Army airborne operations, including some special order new helicopters, some larger helicopters like the Sea Knight and the Sea Stallion, um, and the Chinook, which are all big, big helicopters that Battlefront is producing. Uh, I think it's a limited run of them um, on their website. I haven't seen them on sale anyplace else. Um, the British can also uh, participate. West Germans, um, we and and then Warsaw Pact as well has airborne operations. So everybody gets uh, airborne operations, and there are some special rules now on how to to do that. Um, and I think they're going to be coming out with a a like separate pack like a mission pack that has tokens if you don't want to buy the helicopter model stuff like that but it's like come on we we, we play for models so eventually if we do airborne we'll, we'll have to do that uh, you know each nation has a list of things that can be parachuted in and then there's an accompanying special mission that goes with that as well all right we talked about the Cubans uh, we talked about the Soviets we talked about some of the new rules. Let's talk about the U.S. Continental Forces. Uh, basically, the Americans get access to everything they've, they've kind of had access to before. Even, you know, top of the line M1A1 Abrams um, combat teams. So, you know, you've got, um, you've got a lot of the books and basically you're just using stuff out of the the U.S. book that already exists. It's, it doesn't have any um, formations, rules, cards for the Americans except for U.S. Irreg irregular forces, which is basically a militia group 
So it's really just one unit. And this is the unit that's basically the uh, surly teenagers from the movie. Um, in the game, the militia group is five assault rifle teams with RPG-18s, as well as two RPG-7 anti-tank teams. So seven teams total. Uh, that's the, the max size group. You can also take a smaller group. You could give them a mortar, and you could give them pickup trucks with machine guns for transports. Um, unfortunately, you can't give them 50 cals on the back of their pickups. You can only give them 7.62s. But um, still, that's kind of cool and, and thematic. You know, they have some civilian vehicles, which is nice. And the models look great. Um, I don't have any, but um, they, they look good. I'm having a hard time tracking down some of this stuff for this release, which has been, um, you know, a little challenging and delaying reviews and stuff like that. But back to the militia unit. Um, the militia has... Um, Let's see, it has, you can't upgrade the RPGs, it doesn't look like it. But they have the uh, resistance special rule, which means your militia can't be held in reserve but are not deployed on the table. Instead, each turn, roll, uh, turn in the roll for reserves part of the starting step, roll a die for each militia group on a 5+, plus. place the militia group and its transport attachment as if from ambush, but in the enemy deployment area or no man's land. Um, which is awesome. So, um, most of the time when you pop an ambush, it has to be in your own deployment zone. But these guys, if they get in, can be deployed in your enemy's deployment zone. Um, I could see these guys making making it into most lists because they're relatively inexpensive at like four points uh, bare bones. Uh, but you can drop a unit back there and hunt um, things like uh, your opponent's um, anti anti air units assets or their artillery park things like that. So, and we always play red versus blue here. So like this Soviet player might have to dedicate things to leave behind to cover, to protect their um, artillery and their uh, any aircraft, which is oftentimes at the back of your force, kind of hidden um, so it doesn't get shot up. So th that's, that's gonna be interesting. I'm, I really wanna try these guys and see how much of a difference it makes in my opponent's play knowing that these guys might be ambushing at any time anywhere in their deployment area um, you know does that encourage uh, the um, soviet player or the cuban player to just buy a ton of forces and spread them all out everywhere um, i don't know it's, it's so it's going to be interesting what uh, dynamic the resistance unit adds to the game and i think that's a cool thing i think that's a good thing because um you know, it's adding a new way to play uh, with the Americans. That's, that's very not non-standard. So uh, I'm looking forward to trying that out. Okay, um, next up we've got more kind of the soft stuff in the book. We've got the scenarios. There is kind of a themed, um, you know, a, adventure almost to go on. I think I might do these as just uh, standalone missions because they're very short small missions and I might just uh, uh, play some of those on the channel just on my own and uh, if you're interested let me know and I'll, I'll make that happen um, but yeah yeah there's all kinds of cool stuff most of those missions involve the uh, the militia group on the American side and that's it and it makes it pretty cool it's almost like you're you're playing scenarios that tell uh, uh, story or movie about what's going on the um, last thing I wanted to talk about was the other new mission which is the air assault mission that they introduced uh, the air assault mission is you know and I'll have it here on the screen um, looks really interesting I really want to play this but we have to build all new forces and I believe Mark you guys all know uh, Mark from the channel is building his um, Soviet airdrop force as we speak um, so that's pretty cool but the mission uh, has 
it looks like a swirling melee. It has airborne assault for the attacker, airborne scattered delayed reserves, uh, deep scattered delayed reserves for the defender, meeting engagement for the defender, parachute um, deployment for the attacker. The uh, parachute deployment looks pretty cool because you actually have a like a drop zone marker and you put that where it is, you roll a die to see what direction and what distance that unit that's parachuting lands. So, you know, it might land 12 inches away from your drop zone and in that case you, you place the command team 12 inches away and then you deploy the platoon around it. So you're not getting your units kind of exactly where you want them uh, when they initially come down on parachute deployment. But I think that's a really cool mechanic. Um, so I'm looking forward to trying out that mission and see what what, <laughs> what happens. Uh, yeah, again, it looks really cool. So, okay. All right, guys, there you go. That is uh, a really quick chat about the Red Dawn book. Um, I know we didn't cover everything, uh, but uh, I think we covered all the basics. I'm excited for it. I, I will say, again, I've been having a hard time uh, getting things for this release. I actually haven't been able to order any um, thing from any of my local, my, not my local, but my normal distributors. Um, they just haven't had it in stock or they sold out before I realized it was even there. Um, so I'm still working on that. I would love to do an unboxing for the new Soviet uh, box set, the air landing one with all the cool new vehicles, but that may not happen if I can't get my hands on one. So I just want to let you guys know we are still working towards it and you should see that soon. Anyway, I do appreciate you guys sticking with me during this review. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down in the uh, comments below. Uh, if you like what we do with Team Yankee, please do consider giving us a like and subscribe. Click that bell to receive notification when we release new content. As always, thanks for watching and keep on gaming.